Hello, Floss Tube. It's Julie with Reflections Framing and Stitching. Today is technically the 16th of June, but when you see this, it will most likely be the 8th of July. So how was your 4th of July? I'm sure mine was fun. Um, I'll have to make a video about it later, but, but uh, I hope you had a good, safe 4th of July. Uh, today we're going to do a chart of the day video from Scattered Seed Samplers uh, called Vintage Charm Pin Keep. And it looks like that. And hey, guess what's on it? Birds. Bird. Bird. Bird is the word. Um, yeah. I, uh, oh look, and she's got a pair of Kohana scissors sitting right there. So, um, I just like the look of this, this series that she's done on the, on the birds and the pin keeps, uh, I've liked pretty much all of them. And this one really, really called my name. So I decided I would just go ahead and do a chart of the day on this one. And so that's what I did. I pulled the floss, um, not many colors, and they're DMC. So they look like that. A lot of browns. Um, it calls for 36 count vintage country mocha which as we all know looks like this. This is the fabric. Well, maybe we don't all know. I assume sometimes that you guys have all been stitching as long as I have, which I hope is not true because I would like to know that there are, are younger women coming up in the stitching community to take the place of us old people who are going to be dying off. So... Not that I'm killing anyone off anytime soon. I'm just saying it it happens and I would like I would like it to know that that our craft will continue on long after my generation is gone. Um unfortunately, I get a lot of the younger generation that curl their lip, literally curl their lip when they come in with their mothers at cross stitch. So I don't know how to combat that. I'm trying to bring in some things into the shop that are maybe a little more appealing to the younger group uh, without being offensive to the older group. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Anyway, so this is Vintage Country Mocha. This is a stamped fabric, meaning one side is plain and the other side has been stamped with the texture. They make this in, there's vintage smoky white, so it's got a white with kind of a grayish uh, stamped texture on it. Um, I think there's vintage stormy night, which is a gray, and there's one other, there's vintage, There's another one, I think. Anyway, they're beautiful fabrics. They're wonderful to work on. Um, so if you haven't tried it, you can try it. And I'm sure you'll agree with me. It comes in Ada, it comes in even weave, and, in, and it comes in linen. So there's something for everybody there. But that's what it looks like. I tend to think that it has a grain um, that runs sideways. So horizontally. To me, it this looks like falling rain. Now, whether it makes a huge difference when you're stitching on it, I, you know, by the time you get all the stuff on it, it probably doesn't make a difference. But when I can, I prefer to, to cut the piece so that the grain goes sideways. Anyway, that is the called for, which is 36 count, vintage country mocha. 
Um, the, these are all DMC, like all six of them. And I've got this handy dandy little thing called a pen that I'm using to hold my flaws because I left my skewer downstairs. Um, so those are the, the colors on there. It looks beautiful. Um, you know, I would probably choose this if it was me. If I didn't choose like a vintagey green. Um, but I, I like how this looks, so it wouldn't be an issue for me to, to do this one at all. But, as you know, this is a video that likes to give you choices. So, um, I've kind of run out of places to put things, so I'm going to have to put this back in the bag as I go. So please excuse and ignore the crinkling of the bag. Um, these next two are both the same fabric. It's uh, 40 count oatmeal. Um, and I want to say, I want to say it's color and cotton. One is 40 count, one is 32 count. I don't want to mix them up. So 40 is this one, 32 is this one. But this one, it's different dye lot, different fabric. So this one is just slightly greener than this one. And I brought them both for a reason, um, because I prefer the colors on the less green. So the 32 count. They're okay on this one but I prefer it on the other. So, and I wanted to talk a little bit about dye lots, not specifically fabric dye lots, although that is an issue also, but thread dye lots in general. Um, I, was, I was perusing a social media page and I happened to see a post from a lady, and I'm not naming names or anything, but I happened to see the post from a lady, and she was very upset because she had received some floss that she had ordered that needed to match floss she already had. And it didn't. It came in and it was entirely different. Um, she, was, she was upset. And everyone was, you know, oh, can you return it? Did you tell them what dye lot you needed? Did you this? Did you that? Um, and I just wanted to talk about it a little bit because I think sometimes people have unrealistic expectations when it comes to dye lots and, and uh, in both fabric and floss. Um, I think what everyone needs to realize is every dye lot is different. And most people, most shops, most dyers do not keep, well, most dyers don't have actual dye lots. NPI silks, I think, have dye lots on them that you can request a specific dye lot. But DMC does not have dye lots. However, well, they don't have dye lot numbers. However, their dye lots do change from, from one time to the next, and especially over a number of years. I had that happen with the customer uh, not too long ago. She was just coming back to stitching. She'd started a project 20-some years ago, and I think it was 613 has now changed colors so that it, you wouldn't even know it was the same color. Lucky for her, I had some 613 from the 1990s and it matched her dye lot. And I went ahead and sold that to her out of my own personal stash. A shop having a dye lot from that time period, probably not gonna happen. Um, Turnover on floss is pretty, 
pretty fast. So when you're talking over dyes, I can order at the beginning of the month and then I can order in the middle of the month the same color and they'll come in differently. So I just want you to maybe give shops and the dyers some grace when it comes to dye lots. A lot of it is out of their control. Um, and a shop is not going to have, you can ask, you can, if you know what your dye lot was, you can ask a shop if they have that dye lot. But I'm just going to tell you that it's probably not going to happen. Um, and I'm just being realistic. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to judge anyone. I'm just, from my experience, um, which is one of the reasons why I always say I over buy when I'm kitting something up. I over kit because you just don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if the dog's going to shred it. You don't know if, I don't know, you, you one drops out of the bag and, and you know, you just, you just don't know. So assume that your dye lots are going to change on absolutely everything and purchase accordingly. Don't expect to get the same dye lot you got, you ordered a week ago. I, I've given up all expectations when it comes to colors and dye lots and... Um, because it, they're they're just not going to everything affects how how things are dyed, the amount of humidity in the air, what what chemicals were put in the water that particular day, um, is it cold out? Is it warm out? Is it you know everything affects the dye lot. So assume. If you buy even DMC this week and you come back next week, it may not look the same. You're safer with DMC. <laughs> they are a little more consistent, but not 100%. <coughs> so I just wanted to say that. Just, just so you know, I hate for people to be disappointed in what they purchase and I hate for them to you know place blame where there really isn't any blame to be placed it's a risk you're going to take when you order online and you can't see it in person yet another reason to support your local shops so that they can stay in business and you can see it in person even if you have to drive a little bit further than what you'd like to um, because I hear a lot from, from people traveling through that, oh, I don't have a an LNS. I have to drive an hour to get to it. Okay. It's not that long, especially as you age. An hour goes by really fast. Maybe when you were a kid, an hour was a long time. But as you age, it goes by really, really fast. So I used to think it would take days to get up to the sand hills uh, where we're going to on vacation and now it's like whoa we got here fast well we got there really fast when we were speeding but <laughs> to that funeral but um I'm just saying support your LNS see it in person if if it's if it's a concern for you before you purchase if you have that that opportunity if it's three or four hours away I can understand that but an hour away I don't think that's that's uh, that far at all for something that you, you know, it's always good to see in person. So we're going back to our reg regularly scheduled programming now. I kind of got off on a tangent, but I did want to mention that because I felt really bad for the customer. I felt bad for the shop she ordered it from because she wasn't not happy with them. Um, it, it's out of our control. So... All right, moving on. This is 40 Count Antique Market um, from 
be stitch me I think yeah which is kind of a pinky brown color and I would say use this color with with caution because the one the lightest color in this group may may not show up and it's it's actually their bird bodies so you may have to adjust that I would probably adjust it into more of a gray tone um, but it might show up just fine when you actually stitch on it or if you're stitching on this particular fabric in a 30 two and you're using two strands it'd probably be fine this is 40 count you're going to use one strand and it might be a little I have something in my eye guys it might be a little bit um, dicey so you might keep that in mind if this were a color that you really like I like it but it's not my favorite I left my favorite to the bottom does anyone want to guess what color it is Can you guess? Go ahead, guess. All right, this is 40 Count Silver Fox from um, Fiber on a Whim. I really like this color. Um, it's kind of a blue-green in this dye lot. <laughs> I've had it come in more blue. I've had it come in more green. So, again, um, it helps to see it. This this is a good blue green. And the colors all look really nice on it. And it would make it look a little less vintagey and a little more springtimey, I think. Next up is Stonewashed from Seraphim. It is a blue, but it has some reddish brown splotchiness to it. Looks like that. That's a pretty good representation, although the blue looks a little bit pale on my. Well, that was the weirdest thing that's ever happened. My camera just shut off. Um, I was talking about stone washed and I was saying that I, the blue looks a little washed out. Um, but the colors all look really nice on there. And I think this this color in here picks up the the brownish red that's in the DMC. So I think that could look really nice also. I was so scared it had deleted the video. But it didn't. It was there. I just had to start a fresh one. <sighs> Problems. Always a problem. Okay. So that was stone washed. I'm going to get my hair cut tomorrow and these have got to go. They need to be cut. Now that the humidity is here, I'm thinking the whole thing needs to be cut. <laughs> My sister said I looked a little wild the other day <laughs> when she saw me. It was it was humid and it was windy and just the walk from the from the car to the building. My hair went crazy. And so I'm considering whacking it off again. All right, Atypical, 18 count Atypical has this lovely shades of pink in it. And I think that looks good also. Again, bird bird body color might need to be adjusted a little bit. Darker, lighter, probably darker. A little bit darker would be fine. And then next up we have, oh, by the way, Atypical was from Mystic Fabrics. Um, 
Mad Hatter's Tea Towel from Dames of the Needle. This had quite a bit of difference from one side of the fabric to the other side of the fabric. This was almost white. This was the side I really liked. Um, we don't we don't get to choose. It it is what it is, but it's uh, a really nice fabric. And these would all look nice on it. It would give you the same look probably as the vintage country mocha. Uh, or pretty close to it. Then finally, my out of the box, this is what I would choose sort of thing. And I have it in both a uh, linen and an, um, an Ada. It's uh, Atomic Ranch fabric and it's called Sequoia, which is a beautiful look at that green and blues and browns. Oh, look at that, guys. It's pretty. And then, look at the colors. Oh, I'm going to have to fold it. My hands just aren't big enough. Okay, there you go. Isn't that pretty? Don't you love it? Tell me you love it. Go ahead, tell me. That's so pretty. So pretty. And then on... Now, the, the 40 count is darker than the 18 count. You can see the difference. It's got more blue in it. Um, equally as beautiful though. And also works beautifully. So, there's your fabrics for today. Which one was your favorite? Which one would you choose? Um, the question, hey, I have the question of the day actually ready for you this time. So, in you know, our discussions, we've been talking food quite a bit, Melanie and I, for our upcoming trip. And um, so naturally my mind went to food when, well, my mind goes to food anyway. But um, my question is, what, <clears throat> what food from your childhood did you love as a child? And you're, you, you have the recipe for it, but no matter what you do, you can't quite make it as good as what the person who gave you the recipe, whether it was your mom, your grandma, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, neighbor, the recipe that, uh, or a food that you cannot duplicate, no matter what you do. Um, I, have, I have like three, three that are, are a, maybe four, pretty much anything my mom made. But one of them is one of them for me is my mom's fried chicken, and it was it's a simple you know she just dredged the chicken pieces in flour, salt and pepper, fried it in the pan. But for some reason, and it's more the gravy. I the chicken I can get pretty close, but my gravy has usually no flavor and I don't know if it's because chickens don't taste like they used to um, or what it is but I cannot for the life of me get her the chicken gravy to taste like my mom's um, my my uh, mom's cinnamon rolls forget about it I don't even try I tried a couple times I don't even try 
And then my aunt has always made lemon bars for the 4th of July. <clears throat> and she gave me her recipe because she's getting up there in years. And I've tried it. Alex tried it. Neither one of us can make it so that it looks and tastes like hers. I, I don't know what we're doing wrong. I don't know if she deliberately... Sometimes I think people deliberately omit something from the recipes they share with you so that you can't make it as good as theirs. I don't know. Christmas, my my kids say that my my snowflake cookies... They're good, but they're not as good as grandma's. I and I I so what what food from your childhood are you unable to duplicate? No matter how hard you try. I'd be very interested to know. And with that, I'm going to uh let you go for the day. Because I have one more video to make yet. And then I have to go make Dan Father's Day. Uh, dinner. So um, you take care until next time. Get some stitching done and um, we'll see you when we see you. Thanks so much. Bye.